Hey folks, many moons ago I made a video series titled There is No Evidence for God, in quotation marks and with a little trademark symbol at the end. And for whatever reason, part one of this series has gotten like seven or eight responses from atheists, which is way out of proportion to the response any other video on my comparatively small channel has gotten. And I never really felt motivated to respond to these responses because the atheists either merely recapitulated points uh, already addressed in the original videos, uh, rendering another response superfluous, or they so wildly mischaracterized my position that responding to them would be senseless because how could you possibly debate a person who's just going to lie about what you say anyway? So, uh, as it happens, uh, TJ Kirk slash The Amazing Atheist, the 800-pound gorilla of YouTube atheists, has uh, contributed to this genre of responses, and so I guess I have to respond to him because it is TJ Kirk, and I suppose you can accuse me of being a of being opportunistic here. But in any case, uh, this is not going to be a great entry into my uh, channel. But I beseech you, in any case, to look at the original videos, the original "There Is No Evidence for God" uh, videos, and I will link them down below. Uh, in them, I make points that I feel are interesting and unique and needed. Unlike the atheist responses, which just make points that are stupid and stultifying and uh, predictable. So, uh, uh, in any case, on with the show. Now, you should be familiar with apologetic arguments for God's existence. Uh -huh. The Kalam argument, the contingency argument, uh -huh. the fine-tuning argument, etc. Yep. Uh -huh. And you should know how to defend these against common objections. But please be aware of this. I've seen you try to defend them against common objections. <laughs> I've not really seen too much success in that department. But, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Well, you know, that's just like, uh, your opinion, man. If an atheist declares that there is no evidence for God, and uh -huh. challenges you to convince him otherwise, and you take him up on this challenge, you've already lost. Yeah. The name of this game is There Is No Evidence For God, Prove Me Wrong, and It's A Trap. How's it a trap? <laughs> there is no evidence for God. I mean, like, the, I wouldn't even say prove me wrong, I would just say there is no evidence for God. And if there is evidence for God, you should be able to just be like, no, actually, you're wrong. Here it is. Oh, I guess I was wrong. I apologize for my statement because I'm obviously incorrect. Unfortunately, that openness to evidence you describe characterizes, in my experience, approximately 0.1% of atheists. Uh, you assume that atheists are just completely willing to change their minds upon encountering new evidence. I do not share that assumption. Again, in my experience, atheists are no more willing to change their minds than, say, hardcore anti-vaxxers or flat earthers. See, you've placed them in a position where you could simply swat away any argument you provide by claiming it's been debunked. And uh -huh. when you get nowhere in trying to convince him, which you will because he's determined not to be convinced, he'll expect you to default back to his preferred supposition, there is no evidence for God. Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> You're saying that, um, uh, you, you know, atheists ask for evidence of God, and then you show them the evidence, and they're just so closed-minded, like, this doesn't even count as evidence. Well, maybe it's because the evidence you show them isn't convincing, because usually when you ask a Christian for evidence of God, they just break out the Bible and say, the Bible! The Bible! Look at the Bible! Or they make one of the uh, arguments you talked about earlier, the fine-tuning argument or something like that, but an argument is not the same thing as evidence. Ah, uh, there's another piece of atheist folk wisdom. Arguments aren't evidence. Tossed off, as with all atheist folk wisdom, without any sort of justification whatsoever. It's a claim that's apparently just regarded as self-evident. You may as well put a trademark symbol at the end of it. You know, uh, we're, we weren't convinced of, uh, of, you know, the laws of thermodynamics by a compelling argument. We were convinced by evidence. Weren't convinced of... Uh, uh, quantum reality by a convincing fucking argument or a soaring oratory. We were convinced by evidence. Weren't convinced of the Big Bang because it sounded cool. We were convinced by evidence. So, you know, uh, uh, presenting an argument as if the argument itself is evidence, that doesn't work. Actually, a deductive argument that is both valid and sound, as with any of Aquinas' cosmological arguments, is the strongest kind of evidence you can have because you've proven something to be the case in every possible circumstance rather than merely a contingent set of circumstances, as would be the case with empirical evidence. This whole division between arguments and evidence that atheists have established is based on nothing. It's just more parrot talk from atheists. 
In fact, let's have a look at the dictionary definitions. So evidence is the available body of facts or information indicating whether a belief or proposition is true or valid. An argument is a reason or set of reasons given in support of an idea, action, or theory. Gee, doesn't sound too different, does it? If an argument furnishes you with a reason to believe, it is by definition evidence. Now I'm really going to burst your bubble. You noted correctly that we accepted the truth of relativistic and quantum models based on evidence, but the empirical scientific data used to establish these only has persuasive force when framed in a deductive argument. The inductive logic of scientific hypothesis is actually a deductive argument with an omitted unprovable premise, that premise being that past events are a reliable guide to future events. So the empirical inductive logic used by science is actually a weaker special case of deductive argument of the form used in the Kalam and Aquinas' five ways, so take that banana of truth and shove it up your ass. There is no evidence for God. That's how we talk. There is no evidence for God. Remember how I talk like that? And you reply, I certainly disagree with that claim. Can you provide any reason why I should think there's no evidence for God? Ah, the classic shifting of the burden of proof. That'll fucking solve it. Uh, no, me asking you to prove your claim is not shifting the burden of proof. It's the exact proper application of the burden of proof. Now, you asking me to disprove your claim, that's shifting the burden of proof. That was kind of the point of my whole video. It kind of flew right over your head. All right, let me just, uh, let me just stop you there for a second. Because, um, that's silly. Like, if I were to deny the evidence, if I were to say to a scientist or something, there's no evidence for the Big Bang, they wouldn't try to shift the burden of proof and be like, oh, yeah, well, can you show me evidence that there's no evidence for the Big Bang? They wouldn't do that because that's stupid. That's shifting the burden of proof. Uh, you're the ones making a claim. You're claiming there's an all-powerful being that's controlling everything, that rules over us. Uh, where in that video did I ever make that claim? For the purposes of argument, I might as well be an honest atheist who's criticizing the dishonest tactics of other atheists. I don't need to assent to the premise that God exists in order to criticize the assertion that there is no evidence for God. Now, I believe God exists. I've made that claim in the past, and when I make it in the future, I will gladly defend it. That's not what this video is about, however. It's about when atheists claim that there is no evidence for God. Please try to keep up. Uh, if I went to a scientist and said, oh, there's, there's, no, so, there's no evidence of the Big Bang, they would just say, yes, there is. Here it is. And they'd present it to me, and I could choose to accept it or I could choose to reject it. But that's what they would do because they actually have evidence. Okay, so let's say someone comes up to you and says, there is no evidence for the Big Bang, and you submit your evidence to them and they say, no, that's been debunked. That's not evidence. And then another person comes up to you and says, there is no evidence for the Big Bang, and you submit your evidence to them, and they say, no, that's been debunked, that's not evidence. And let's say this happens 400, 500, 600 times. All the while, there's this growing chorus of retards chanting this mantra, there is no evidence for the Big Bang. Uh, moreover, they're propagating the notion that anyone who believes in the Big Bang is irrational, obviously, because they believe in something without evidence. Uh, moreover, they're indoctrinating young people with this notion that it's okay to hurl abuse at people who believe in the Big Bang and treat them as subhuman because they believe in something without evidence. Uh, would you not then consider that perhaps you shouldn't be accepting the argument on their terms? Uh, would you not then consider that when they ask you for evidence of the Big Bang, after already asserting that such evidence does not exist, they may not be asking with a genuine desire to know? Would you not then see the danger in allowing them to use their own ignorance as an argument against the Big Bang? Would you not then see the value in holding them to the burden of proof of proving their own claim that there is no evidence for the Big Bang? The reason that you're trying to do this weird burden shifting, burden of proof shifting uh, bit of sophistry is because you have no fucking evidence. Uh, the Kalam contingency fine tuning arguments all mentioned at the top of my video specifically to head off this objection. Asking an atheist for evidence of a lack of evidence is a perfectly reasonable application of the burden of proof. No, it's but not. But atheists struggle. How with is how is that a? That's like okay. We, we take any random example. Like, I can say, oh, I, th I'm drinking Red Bull. I think that Red Bull literally does give me wings. There's tons of evidence all over the television. 
You see these cartoon characters drinking Red Bull and then they sprout wings and they can fly. So I think Red Bull does give you wings. Uh, you know, and you say, well, there's no evidence that that's actually true. And I, I say, oh, yeah, well, prove that there's no evidence. Prove it. So what's the alternative here? Are you supposed to believe me just because I say that there is no evidence that Red Bull gives you wings? No, you wouldn't believe me and you shouldn't believe me just because I say something. Now, if the entire basis of your belief is that you saw it in a cartoon on TV, I could try explaining to you how cartoons on TV aren't real and try getting at it from that angle. Uh, getting at it from the angle of merely asserting that there is no evidence that Red Bull gives you wings and expecting you to believe me would be completely ineffective. You can't prove that. You can't prove a fucking negative. Everyone knows that. Uh, no, nobody knows this because it's not true. Atheists say it, however. It's another completely baseless piece of atheist folk wisdom. Logic and mathematics are filled with proofs of negatives. The fact that atheists don't know this just shows how dismally ignorant they are. Can you provide mm. evidence of no evidence? I suspect it's impossible myself. Well then... <laughs> All right, so you admit that, I mean, like, you're basically admitting here that it's dumb. Can you provide evidence for no evidence? I suspect it's impossible. So basically, your response if to an atheist who asks you to provide evidence of something that you believe in is to give them an impossible task. A task that's impossible by your own admission. Okay. Well, if you can't prove your claim, don't make that claim to begin with. That's what I'm trying to show you. You know, there's a great irony in all of this, that atheists accuse Christians of believing something without proof, which I disagree with, obviously, but what you believe is actually worse. Not only do you believe something without proof, you believe that your claim must be accepted as true because, by virtue of the fact, it is unprovable. That's like the most irrational thing a person can possibly believe. But if proving your claim is impossible, that only means that you shouldn't make the claim to begin with. Only no. in bizarro athe yes. atheist world does the impossibility of proving a claim become a justification for making it. <laughs> okay, so apparently there's a few concepts that you need to that need to be explained to you. Like probability is one, F uh, falsifiability is another. Why am I blurry? Don't make me blurry. Is this God's punishment for me questioning His wisdom? Falsifiability, like it, it, if you can't prove something if you can't prove something if there's no way to disprove something then you shouldn't believe that thing uh no you're trying to take papyrian falsifiability and overextend it as a universal epistemic principle it's arguably not even sufficient for science i'm sorry this is just amateur pseudo intellectual horseshit so something being impossible to disprove uh that that means you shouldn't believe it again horseshit but as it happens, God is not necessarily disprovable. God can be disproven in principle by proving that his attributes are contradictory. People try to do this by proving that God cannot be both all just and all merciful, or by proving that omnipotence is incoherent. I don't think these arguments are successful, obviously. But God can be disproven in principle, so goes that argument. Because things that are real can be disproven. Wait, what? Because things that are real can be disproven. Because, because things, things that are, that are real, real can, can be disproven. Because, because things, things that are real can be disproven. Because things that are real can be disproven. Because things that are real can be disproven. <gasps> Sorry about that, folks. Now, I should also note that atheists have an accumulated body of folk wisdom dedicated solely to trying to rationalize why they shouldn't have to prove their negative claims. Uh, maybe because, as you just said, it's impossible to prove a negative? You seem to understand that, so... I never said that. I never would say that. I know it to be false. In any case, having an impossible burden of proof wouldn't relieve you of the burden of proof. It would only indicate that you shouldn't make that claim to begin with. If it's impossible to prove your claim, that does not become a license to make that claim. That is a completely irrational notion. <laughs> you're the one who seems like you're being a little bit unreasonable here. These range from misapplications of the presumption of innocence and the null hypothesis to uh -huh. the claim that you can't prove a negative, right. which is false. You just said that, though. You just said you can't prove a negative. 
Uh, no, I said that I suspect proving a lack of evidence is impossible. I never said proving a negative is impossible. It's like I said, I suspect that cat is gray, and you take that to mean I'm asserting that all cats are gray. Uh, you're seriously incapable of logical thought. You're incapable of engaging intelligently and honestly with opposing viewpoints. And I know what your anime avatar fanboys are going to say. They're going to say, <laughs> That Christ card called us illogical. <laughs> That's ironic. You dumbasses don't even know what logic is. To my subscribers, I apologize for all this messiness and ugliness. There are better things on the horizon, you have to believe me. Please have a blessed Easter, and like and share as always, thank you. I'm the Banana Boy, I'm fierce. I'm the Banana Boy, woo! I'm the Banana Boy, I'm fierce. I'm the Banana Boy.